Aloha, Kako. It is my pleasure to be here today. My name is Laura Margulies. I'm an assistant professor of animation at the Academy of Creative Media at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Mahalo to the Hawaii Book and Music Festival and to Roger Jelinek for inviting us. I am delighted to be here with you all and with the three of our recent graduates from the Academy of Creative Media. At the Academy of Creative Media, we encourage filmmakers to make films from their own experiences and that reveal a sense of place. These three bright and motivated filmmakers here with us today have made films that tell authentic stories to and from their lives in Hawaii. Two of the films are animated and one is in digital media. I would like to introduce our guest panelists today, Kalili Noy Detweiler, Brianna Smith, and Gavin Arukan. As a Kanaka artist and scholar, Kalili Noy Detweiler explores paths of cultural perseverance by expressing ancestral knowledge in the present through animation and creative writing. She is pursuing an English master's degree at the University of Hawaii and animates Hawaiian mo'olelo for indigenous productions. Can you wave hello to Kalili Noy? <laughs> Thank you for being here. Brianna Smith is a recent graduate of the University of Hawaii at Manoa's Creative Media Program. Previously, she co-directed a film that was screened at the Hawaii International Film Festival, directed a film that was screened in Shanghai, China through the UH Smart Program, and has just completed her second documentary in the summer of 2020. Can you say hi, Brianna? Thank you, glad you're here. Gavin Arukan is a Hawaii-based storyboard artist and filmmaker with a BA in animation from the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Currently, Gavin storyboards on the web series Hell of, Hell of a Boss. Previously, they have directed several animated short films, including The Pakala Kids, Pua Warriors, and Sina Matine Rao. Gavin is also a new lecturer in the animation department at the University of Hawaii. And so now, uh, without further ado, I'd love to uh, show you their films. So we're going to start with Kalili Noy's animated film, Pua Ka Wahi. E kamu po ai. Ah, wa pulu paha oi ka huda huna kai. A o ko oli oli paha i e ki e hui ana ka wa. A o he oli a u ke kuma ka ka i kena i wahi a u uku. Mai ho o ko hu oi. A o le hiki ke laka ku ukino po a. Oi ya, 
A oe aina i kūpa hu ke kūla i aku oi ka moku. Ke hoa mai ka i mai nei oe. Ua pā kela kela hoa i ka ui kaika. Ali eiki. Eia ka uki. E au aku au a puni ka moku puni. A hoa pua ae e la ke hiki anu i hiu. Oia mau no. E ka a mai ana ke o ia. Oia a nei. Ah, oh yeah. Ah, a little one, a little oh yeah. Kilina mana mana e hiaka. Bravo, Kalilinoi. What a gorgeous film. I wanted to ask you, um, why, what, um, why did you choose this Mo'olelo to animate? Um, I guess, I mean, at the time I was studying Kamahua and I knew I wanted to animate Mo'olelo Ka'o, but I was also aware that as a Kanaka Uivi, I wasn't in a place of knowledge to actually animate that ka'o of Pele and Kamapua, um, like the ones we see written now. But I wanted to still draw inspiration from their relationship and see what it would look like um, with people that look kind of like us and with this new setting or this new situation of them having this kind of kukini race across the island. Um, and I guess another big goal that I wanted to accomplish with this was um, the idea of Kanaka watching this and recognizing the characters and the setting without any dialogue or exposition. Um, and I thought that was really important to try and achieve. It's a really beautiful film. And now next, let's see um, Brianna Smith's film, um, Welcome to the Lanes. as if you're walking into the past, yet it's the present. It's almost like when you go home to your old, your old house, maybe you go visit your, your parents or something, and, and you walk in, you always go in and you open up the refrigerator and just see what's in there just because. That's like Polly Lee, you open up the door and everything is the same, and oh, there's a few new faces here, but it's all the same. It's welcoming just the same. So I was nice uh, born job. in a little town in California. After I finished my bachelor's, I wanted to look outward to go to graduate school. All right, we got it. Okay. Good luck, Josh. Pretty good, huh, Keanu? I know. Josh is doing awesome. You too, Keanu. 
So RINGS stands for Windward Instruction for Generalization of Skills. The mission behind that is to be able to practice and generalize those skills that folks learn in school, in the community. So socialization, good manners, getting along with others, being kind to each other. Also, be able to volunteer in the community because being able to volunteer in the community for our individuals to have a purpose so that they can get up in the morning and have some place to go, a purpose to do where they're valued by the community at large is so important. It's so important for us to be able to come as a routine twice every week so everyone looks forward to coming, they look forward to seeing their friends, they look forward to seeing the people behind the desk and having an opportunity to uh, get their own money out and pay for their to pay for their game maybe to buy a soda in the machine uh, and have some good camaraderie with each other Time for snack. and then we also have an opportunity after the game to be able to have some snacks uh, some socialization around the table, talk to each other, how's everyone doing, lots of fun there. So it's so important to be able to come to the same place every week. Like we walk in and everyone knows our name, everyone knows us there, which is, which is terrific. Or we take pictures, we send pictures home to the families and everyone loves it. Wow, Brianna, that is such a moving film. Thank you for making it. It really, it, it makes me choked up when I watch it. Thank you. I wanted to ask you how you um, came to this subject. Yeah, so I really wanted to do a film um, about, you know, a local, maybe older place in Hawaii, because I have been seeing so many of my favorite places that I grew up um, with closed down for various reasons. So I wanted, I knew I wanted to do something within that topic. And I was just scrolling online one day and um, I found this article about Polly Lanes and it really struck a chord with me. And it wasn't even about the wings group. It was actually about um, some senior citizens that bowl there. But um, I just thought about just the human emotion that comes with, you know, seeing people go to places that they're so passionate about. And I think um, we all have places like that. And, you know, for the potential um, for them to, you know, ever be taken away from us is kind of, um, you know, really sad feeling. So I thought, you know, I really thought there could be a story there. And that's kind of how it came to be. So once you um, narrowed in on Polly Lanes, how did you connect with um, Rosie and the Wings program? Yeah, so basically they have they had a committee called the Save Polly Lanes Committee. So I would go to their meetings and I asked the president if there if he could lead me to someone who, you know, um, had a story that, you know, they would um, let me, you know, kind of uh, showcase and he let me talk to a couple of people and, um, you know, Rosemary really stood out to me and her story and, um, you know, everyone wanted to participate and um, I think it just really flowed and that's, I think, when I knew like, okay, this is a story that I want to tell. That's awesome. It's nice hearing some of the backstory. Uh, next up is Gavin Arukan's animated film, The Pakala Kids.
permission too. What do you think, Mr. Avocado? May I? No, I'm old and mushy. You can't pick me. Uh, uh, um... Wait, Dixie, I'm almost... Ah! Dear Forrest, Please let me pick this avocado. Uh, amen. You're an idiot. I'm a ninja. Whoa. Oh, you can just run in like that. Here, repeat after me. Kunihi kumona ikala ie. Oh, why ale ale? Um. Ha! Huh? You can't even remember your own chants. Come on, you're wasting time! She was just on my mom's face like, I know your daughter has it, but this time I actually didn't take her chicken. Of course she doesn't believe me, so now I... There you stay, girl. Mom, wait! Where you was all this time? I was just hanging out with Dixie. Hey, you didn't do that yesterday. You are supposed to be helping your father okay, now. Okay, ow, ow! Just let me say bye real fast. <sighs> okay then. Fine. Hurry up, huh? And put your hair back up. Wow, Gavin, <laughs> you're so good at, at capturing small kid time <laughs> in Hawaii. It just yeah. rings with, uh, with you know, experiences that I, I feel that I, I know myself. Um, can you talk about a little bit about how much of that came from your own life and how much was just sort of invented? Well, yeah, the setting is definitely from my own experiences. It's um, West Side Kauai, uh, Pakala Village. That's where um, the Japanese side of my family came from. And so back when um, my great grandma had a house there, that plantation, um, I would go there every, pretty much every summer. And um, there's not a whole lot to do other than just run around and uh, do whatever with uh, my cousin or my sister. And so um, I made another film uh, set there before, but this one, I just really wanted to explore like um, these, just the life of these two kids living in that town and um, also explore a few other like social issues hidden in there a bit, but yeah. I really like how you did that. It, it feels like it has a lot of um, deep meaning in there. Mm -hmm. I really like. Did you, um, as a child, did you know people who did that in the forest, who had the, ch the chance and, you know, would, um, yeah, pray before taking a fruit or something? Um, yeah, I can't remember any specifics. Um, of, course, of course, not um, uh, Hawaiian, but uh, there would be like these uh, kind of quirky things that my Japanese family would do before doing anything. Um, 
can't really think of one off the top of my head. But... Can you guys talk about the life of the um, your films, like where it has shown and what you hope to do with it? Um, anything you know about about the film's own life, and you know, just jump in as you like. I guess I can start. Um, yeah, it's had a uh, pretty decent success at film festivals. It premiered at the Hawaii International Film Festival last year. Um, and I'm mostly focusing on, um, after that, I've been mostly focusing on kind of uh, smaller, more cultural based um, film festivals. Uh, there's an Asian Dunn Film Festival. Uh, I think this weekend is the Culture Animation Festival. Um, and yeah, uh, mainly wanting to get it out to uh, audiences that are generally like part of more underrepresented groups so that they can see this film. Um, it's screened at some festivals too, unfortunately virtual, but um, I'm so glad we were able to show it. Um, I think the proudest thing for me though is just being able to share it with the participants of the Wings group because unfortunately Polly Lanes did close down during the pandemic. And so um, I know that this film has, you know, a lot more meaning to it, to those individuals. So I think that's kind of, you know, my proudest um, way to, my proudest way to spread the film. Yeah. Mine also showed at um, a few uh, online film festivals, I think 13-ish. And coming up, it'll be with Gavin's on Guam PBS and the Smithsonian Native Cinema Showcase. I think it's for the future, so one of the future selections. Um, we have a question from an audience member from um, Miwa. And Miwa asks, what is the production cost for a short film like that? And this is to all of you. Well, for Pakala Kids, uh, I, remember. We, I think we got some funding from the school. This was definitely one of my smaller projects. I had done uh, crowdfunding before, um, but this the production of this film collided with the pandemic. So I was like, I don't want to ask people for their money right now. So it was um, uh, mostly self-funded with uh, some funding from the school. And then um, there's somewhere else too. Uh, Oh, uh, from the Abernethy screenplay competition. And we had some help from uh, people at Honolulu Kitchen. Uh, but yeah, I, this was kind of a, a smaller film for me. And so it didn't take a whole lot. Also same. Um, I think I mainly paid, or most of my funds went toward the crew members. So our animators, and then um, background artist, and then our awesome sound, our music composer. Um, but it was like only 600 a budget. And then I paid for my tools and our drawing tablets through my leftover scholarship money from school. Um, I also got funding from the school, but uh, this documentary didn't cost much at all. Um, you know, I was able to use equipment from school and everything like that. Um, so it really was um, accessible for me to produce. That's great, thank you. Um, we have another question from um, Roger Jelinek, and he's asking, are you pl all planning to establish a career in the medium? Yeah, so I'm currently working as a storyboard artist in, anim in TV animation. So um, as far as I'm concerned, I'm not focused on too many uh, short films of my own right now, maybe sometime soon. But uh, yeah, that's my path. I'm just gonna go off learn as much as I can. And if I have another story to tell, I'll have a whole lot of experience to tell it with. I guess um, a couple of years ago, one of my dreams was creating an animation studio in Hawaii, specifically to tell Ka'o um, and to incorporate youths to help them start animating. Um, because animation is such an accessible media. Uh, right now, I'm taking a, well, I'm not taking a break from animation. I'm very much still animating, but I think my focus has shifted to more just storytelling in general. 
And if it happens to be an animation, then that's just a plus and a chance to use these skills. But mainly I wanna research and do education um, with this idea of animation as technology adding to it. Um, I definitely wanna produce more films. Um, I'm supposed to be getting my MFA next year in, um, in documentary. So I definitely hope to learn more skills and, um, you know, just be immersed in more of it.